On the outside, a facade of exquisite granite, shipped in from Oswan. In the hallways stood 24 massive pillars to mark the hours of the Egyptian day. At the heart of the temple were two sanctuaries aligned to the east and west, and a gleaming courtyard of alabaster tiles surrounded by 10 mysterious statues. What was the purpose of this lost temple? The Sphinx temple is offline with the Sphinx, shifted slightly to the left. Mark believes that this apparent mistake was actually deliberate. Could it be the key to decoding the secrets of this strange ruin? The curious thing is that the axis of the temple does not aim directly at the Sphinx. It's as though the Sphinx is shoved to the north, and the axis of the temple points past it up the western horizon. One other feature of the temple layout might be a clue to what the ancient Egyptians were aiming the axis towards. These two sanctuaries, which are in the form of recessed bays and small niches, define the temple axis. It's very compelling to think that that's for the rising sun on the east and the setting sun on the west. Mark believes the Egyptian master builders would not have done this accidentally. He thinks they deliberately pointed the temple axis at the spot on the horizon where the sun would set at a special time of year. The Sphinx temple is oriented on this axis so that it is aligned to the setting of the sun and the rising of the sun at the equinoxes. As the sun set on the equinox, it dropped directly behind the shoulder of the Sphinx and the south side of Khafre's pyramid. The shapes of Khafre's pyramid and his Sphinx would merge to become one perfect silhouette. Khafre and his builders were trying to harness the power of the sun. And after Khafre died, he hoped that this alignment would be a kind of resurrection machine he was in effect hitching himself to the eternal cycle of the sun so that he too would rise in the afterlife. 